Once you start at the pelvis and the spine, just going to stand comfortably and then begin to relax your knees into a slight bend. And let your tailbone, your pelvis, tuck under as your spine begins to round. The chest bone can drop, the head can drop, knees nicely bent. And then just slowly rise up and let your pelvis tilt the other way as your tailbone starts to lift and the chest comes up and the chin comes up. And then repeat, so you just round your spine back, allow the knees to bend, exhale, inflection. And then slowly roll up, let the pelvis tilt the other way, lengthen the front of your body. Inhale, and one more time, round the back of your body. Relax here, take another breath in and out. Then roll up slowly, begin to straighten the knees, tilt the pelvis, stretch the front of your body. Nice deep breath in, and then just find a nice center point. And we'll take that point, that middle range, and just begin to weight shift. Begin to take a nice wide stance and move your body from left to right, letting the knees relax as your weight transfer. And we'll begin to reach the same arm out to the side, so if you're on your, your right leg, it's your right arm that moves, and left leg for left arm to move. And then just have a second or third push there. Just to begin to warm up the calf muscles and the opposite leg and the knee. Reaching, stretching a little further out each time. Notice the knees bend and straighten and the head and eyes follow the arm. Let's rotate now. So allow your spine and pelvis, ribs, head, even the even the heel comes around, so the whole body's in a gentle twist. Keep within your range. You don't have to go too far. But then a few gentle pulses when you're there. And as if you're opening up the chest muscles in front of the body, as well as rotating the spine, putting a bit of pressure on the, the leg joints as you rotate there. If you do have a knee injury, careful not to twist too far on this one. Okay, into centre. We'll side stretch. So just let the knees bend and reach over. These movements are very similar to the weights with flow routines that we've covered last couple of weeks. So you might recognise these exercises. You can push there and reach. Use the legs to help stretch over. Just breathe naturally, softening the knees, re-straightening, stretching muscles under the arms. Okay, let's focus more on the shoulder. If we bring one leg forward, and just let the arms swing nice and freely, soften the knees each time. If you know the shoulder's a bit stiff for you, then you can just be sure not to go too high. Otherwise, feel free to come right through, even for a full circle. Really good preparation for racket sports or golf. Semicircles and circles. Either direction. And then we'll just shake that arm out. Just kind of relax the wrist and elbow and shoulder. Let's change over. So again, without any body part that you move, it's key to use the whole body. So I'm using my torso, using the knees, using the legs to help swing the arm. Again, if this shoulder is a bit tight, just go careful not to go too high. And we can step forward and shake that side out. Okay, let's take both arms up for a nice stretch. Breathe in and reach up. And you can push one hand on the other to stretch further and further and side bend slightly, left and right so you can rotate. And then bring the arms down. And you kind of shake the whole body. Shake your wrist, shake your knees, shake your shoulders. And then we'll go back to the beginning for the pelvic tilt where you bend the knees and round the spine. And this time go a little further. 
feel free to go down to knee height or even right towards the ground if your muscles and spine feel comfortable for that. And then roll up. And this time as we lift up and extend the body, stretch the arms up, take a nice inhale. And then sweep down, back's a bit straighter, and then relax your back with a curve. Again, feel free to go a little further down. A bit more shaking out to the shoulders. Rise up. Let the knees straighten, lengthen your abdomen, reach up. Take another breath or two here. And then slowly just find your way back to centre. Okay, so we'll begin this energising routine using a dumbbell with a bicep curl. It's not a regular bicep curl where we just stand still and curl up and down. It's a flowing, cooperative movement through the whole body where we're recycling those forces. Gravity and ground reaction force. Down and up. And then an impulse to come back. So the legs are very involved with this series. We're starting with a little bicep movement. Feel free to find the right tempo that works for your body. It might need to be slower. You might feel that a faster pace is appropriate. So as you explore your body with these exercises, feel out the right tempo. If it's jolty, if it's uncomfortable, if you're losing that smoothness, then you might need to slow down. You can begin to open out, up, push, and reach through. So there's that reloading of power. The right foot can even come up and push to reach. So it becomes a fuller movement. And I'm taking some nice breaths here to control the breathing. Swing, release, open out. Okay, we'll bring that back down. Okay, and we'll just pause very briefly. I'm going to keep with the right side, introduce a shoulder press, starting with a bicep curl, then up to the ceiling. We'll curl, loop, and reach. One, reload, catch that movement. Notice how the head comes along, looking down, looking middle, looking up, looking down again. The left arm just does what it does, it just flows along. It's right shoulder, both legs, right calf muscle, right lower leg is a big part of this support here. One, two, nice breathing. A couple more times. Okay, and then steady, come down, easy. Just shake out. A little time to relax. Add a third piece to the move. Add a tricep extension. Bicep curl. Reload. Shoulder press. Reload. Tricep extension. And back down. One. Two. Three. So we're toning the upper body. We're freeing the upper body. But we're driving from the legs. The ankle joint, the knee joint, the hip joint. They all cushion and then open. Down up, down up, down up. Again, feel free to slow this down. Feel it out. This routine's about energy, about recycling those forces of gravity and ground reaction force. Free energy, available all day long. Let's add a fourth piece to the move. As we come down, nice sideways, biceps, shoulders, triceps, shoulders again. One, two, three, four. Okay, and about there, we'll bring that back down. Rest the weight down for a moment. Relax. Just sense into that whole experience there. Take a moment to be still. Heart rate may have come up slightly. Take a couple of long breaths here. Probably got more energy, more aliveness, more awareness of that right side. Okay, let's balance that out with the left. 
So we're starting with a bicep curl. Find a breathing that works for you. Find a tempo that works for you. That is this nice cooperative movement. This flow through the body. You can begin to open this out a bit more. Forwards, in, then back out. Now, if you do find this is uncomfortable for your knees or your hips or any body part, this may not be appropriate for you right now. There are some other routines you can do instead. They're more gentle. This is a more dynamic, more energizing routine. So we don't need caffeine to get energy. We can exercise. Okay, let's bring that back down. little pause. You might like to just take a moment to relax the wrist and forearm and shoulder. We'll add the shoulder press. Left leg is back. Bicep curl, little loop, shoulder press. Down up, down up. Using those forces, recycling. Gravity, push off, gravity, push off. Nice breathing. One, two. Couple more repeats of the shoulder press. Okay, good. We'll add the tricep extension. Both legs are working here, so feel free to do a little leg loosening. Let's add the tricep. We'll keep the bicep. We'll keep the shoulders. We'll add a little tricep tone there. One, to two, to three. Remember the breathing. Nice flowing breath. Nice flowing body. Nice graceful movements, opening up, toning, energizing. Let the head move with the body. One, two, to three, to shoulder, raise behind, lateral raise, biceps, shoulder press, tricep extension, lateral raise. One, two, three, four. Might need to be slower for some people. Three, four. Okay, last repeat. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then rest the weight back down. So with the right leg leading, we're doing a nice, simple three-dimensional movement where we weight shift. There's a forward and back motion. There's a slight left to right motion. And there's a rotation. I'm facing forwards. And as I get there, facing a bit to the right. From there, we'll add a, we'll add a hip hinge. So take that hip joint back. Left foot can rest down. And let's begin a set of one-leg squats here. Now, the left foot is lightly touching. I'm really working on this right leg. It's slow. Turn a bit more to the side for you to see that um, my weight's mostly on the right heel. There's natural length and tone to the upper body. So careful not to flex or to be too upright, just easy. The challenge here is we're not fully straightening the knee, just to about there, a few inches short. So there's still some intensity. Right glute, right quads. You can go quite deep like this if you're quite advanced with your leg conditioning and free from any injuries today. Otherwise, it may not be as deep. It's slow, about a five-second countdown, maybe even longer. A little pause. And then to come up, take it slow. Left foot's there, but it's mostly right leg that we're focusing on. Now, two or three of these can be enough. I'll demonstrate one more, how we're sinking down, pausing, and pushing down, slowly coming up. Right heel pushes down. Feel these muscles here. Rise, pause. Left foot's going to push a bit to help come all the way up. Should be a bit of a struggle to get up for that last one. Okay, let's do the left side. Left leg leading. Nice, simple weight shift. Transfer the body weight. You rotate. Little hip hinge. 
right leg settles back. I'll turn on the side for you to see again. Nice natural length to the upper body. Begin to sink down. I've taught this movement before in previous video blogs and in classes. What we're doing today is we're slowing it down. We're making those muscles work. These muscle fibers are uncrossing, they're lengthening. And then those fibers cross back. And we're not going to rest just to there, then back down. Take some breaths. This should be quite challenging. You're going to hold on to a counter or chair to help your balance. You might be going from here, small range, to here. And for today, that is your squat. Next week, next month, next year, at some point, perhaps it's deeper. Push down left heel. Right foot's there, but I'm, I'm just using it for a bit of support, a bit of balance. Maybe it's like 80% on this side. Nice breathing. Push into that heel. Slow, slow, slow. It should be starting to fatigue. That's when to do one or two more. Let's get right in that toning zone. Even if you feel you can't get back up for another one, still attempt one more. Take some breaths. Muscle fatigue soon goes away. And when ready, you may have another one or two. You might have rested already. But about here, we'll come to relax. Okay, great. Some super slow training for our leg muscles, our support. Let's do an up and body exercise. We'll do a push-up. Now, to do slow and partial range, we don't really need, well, some people probably will, but you may not need a full press-up. So a three-quarter press-up, even a box press-up closer in is fine. I'll demonstrate from a three-quarter position today how we're going to begin to lower slowly, not too deep initially, then press into the hand to begin to return. And we're stopping about here, elbows are still bent, and then lowering. So as well as moving slower, we're eliminating the rest phase. If you can go further down, your head is just beyond the hands. Sometimes I see this where the head is before the hands. And this is really, we're trying to load up the arm muscles and bones and connective tissues. We're trying to put pressure on these joints and muscles. Allow that to happen, even if it's not as deep. Nice and slow as you return. And the pressure is continuous. Feet might be down, this is fine. Nice breathing, if you can go deeper, little pause. Slow on the return. Go right down again, or it can be a partial range. Feel out your body. My muscles are beginning to shake a bit. I'm feeling this. This is great. I'm going to go for another one a bit deeper. I'm going to stop talking for a moment to focus. If you feel there's more there, go for more. You need to rest, just rest back at any time. Just feel these pectoral muscles, shoulder muscles, tricep muscles. Okay, good, good, good. Slowly ease back, if you haven't already, when you're ready to. Okay. You can do a circuit of these. A set of squats each leg, push-ups. Then we'll come to the teaser now and then back to the squat and do a few rounds of this, like a slow circuit. Something for the legs, something for the upper body, something for the middle. Very simple training. Now, teasers are not for beginners, so you might opt for um, the Relax and Renew video on the members page of the website for more gentle toning or some of the other videos. Or we could repeat the squats during this phase. 
If you are okay with your back today and your abdominal muscles will begin to go out a good amount. Same philosophy, it's slow and we're not coming in too far. So you go out a bit and in slightly. If you come in too close, you get to rest and you've got to start again. Let's maintain the intensity with today's workout. If you can, go right down to that nice yogic stretch pose and then slowly, slowly, a little bit of shaking is okay, not too far in. Slow. Smooth. You may not be going too deep, that's fine. Just as slow on the return. Nice breathing. Helps a bit if you smile. Not too high. It's tempting to come right up. My back's flat on the floor. If you find your back is bowing a lot and feeling strained, this may not be for you today. Or your range is from a higher position. When you're ready to rest, allow yourself that challenge. Let the body feel the fatigue, feel the training effect. Add one more when you're challenged. Get right in that training zone, that sweet spot of training. Allow the fatigue and when you need to rest, when you genuinely need to rest, that's when to take a rest. Start with a weight shift to the left. Bring your right leg back. Float up through your arms and inhale. Let the heel lift and stretch the front of your body. Reach up and back. Little dip at the knees and come over. Hip hinge. Bring the right leg back. Flex through your spine. Let's do a few head lifts here. Legs straightish as you look forward. And then soften your knees and look back. Legs get pretty straight, fingertips may or may not quite touch the ground as you look forwards. Exhale down, look behind. Inhale to look forward. So relax the hands down on the mat, take the right leg back to a nice lunge, and immediately relax the knee down. Have a little play here, a little bit of movement. Allow your body to have some forward and back. You can even adjust the hands inside if you prefer. A little bit of exploring within each of these positions. Then we can lift that right knee off the ground. A little more exploring here. Before pushing into the hands, lifting up your tailbone and sliding that left leg back. And we'll ease, end up in a, a down dog position where you just slowly lower one heel and then allow it to rise and the other heel. And we'll come forwards onto the hands, smoothly lower to the knees. Sit back towards the heels. And I'm going to glide along the mat and slide the legs back and slide the body down. End up in some mini cobras, just easing up and down. Hands can be right under the shoulders. It can be a little further forwards. Let's let the inhale come in here and the exhale as you lower. We could do a few of these. Just relaxing those shoulders. Left hand connects, right hand connects, left hand, right hand. Feel free to go higher. Continuously breathing. Shoulders are easy. Nice support through the arms. Feel a little bit of pressure on your back. You can reload and go a little higher. And reload and a little higher. Listen into your back, how high that feels appropriate for you today. Another version is to keep the forearms down and not to let the elbows lift. Then bring the elbows underneath your body to push back firmly. Sit right back for a moment. Knees can be wide. Come up onto your palms. Push down into a full plank. Knees could be on the ground at this stage. Pause here. A little bit of movement. I'm circling a bit left, I'm circling a bit right. A little bit of calf lifting. Start to lift your pelvis up, push into your hands, back to that nice, make a nice triangle shape with the body, down dog position. Feet might come in slightly, and do a couple of those heel pulses. 
I'm going to bring the feet in a little bit, drop to a slightly shortened plank and practice some right leg launches. Let's test the wrists here, feel the weight come forwards. How far can that right foot come up towards the hands? Maybe a few inches, maybe a few feet, maybe you can come right through. And then when you come as far as you can, keep there, a little more rocking, come right through. Push down into the feet to help you rise up. You can roll through the spine to rise. Some people like to come up with a straighter back. Leave that one up to you. Let's step back on the right leg to come back to the beginning. Stretch up. Reach through. Get a little higher now you've done all those exercises. And then come back and settle. We'll just pause here for a moment. And let's set up for the left side. Weight shift your body to the right. Let your left leg come back. Arms can reach forwards. Inhale. Let the left heel come up. Stretch. Twist and turn a bit. Soften a bit. Then push. You hip hinge there. And you float down and round your body. Soften the knees. Let the legs straighten a bit as you attempt to look forward slightly. Exhale to relax down. Knees can bend. Look behind. You might have the hands on the shins rather than on the floor. Exhale as you lower. Inhale as you look forward. We'll soften back down with the hands. Just take the left leg back to a nice lunge. Allow the knee to come down to the mat. And just maybe 20 or 30 seconds of play here. I like to take the foot a bit wider, hands on the inside, and explore and kind of mooch about. Feel the stretching of those leg muscles. Adjust the hands as you want to. We'll then bring the left knee off the ground. Pause there for a moment. Ready to lift your bottom up a bit. Slide that right leg back. Connect into the whole of your hands. And let's very slowly open up those calf muscles. So one heel drops towards the ground. Both are up. Other heel slowly. Moving too quickly, those muscles will get a bit of a shock and more likely to shorten. Let's get those to gently lengthen. Nice breathing, heads to relax down, come forwards onto the hands. Strong arms to lower the knees down gently. Let's sit back for a moment. I'm going to slide along the mat to come down, mush along, come down slowly. Hands somewhere comfortable to begin to rise up. I said on the other round, hands can be further forwards. You don't need to come too high. Hands further in. And if you feel like coming up higher, continue to explore more range. You can soften down, reload, press down. Come a bit higher, come a little higher still. I'll leave it up to you. Listen into your back and your shoulders, what feels appropriate for right now. Every day you do the sequence or every week you do this sequence, it might feel slightly different. When ready, bring the elbows underneath you to push down firmly, walk the elbows back, sit back. We'll come up to the plank again briefly, connect into the hands, push down, push down, foot, foot, there's four contact points, nicely engaged, be a natural tone to your abdomen, shoulders and legs. Subtle movement. Start to lift your pelvis up, connecting to the hands. Adjust the feet a bit if you need to. I'm coming a little closer in. Back to those gentle, slow heel lowerings. You may not get right down. Just easing up and down. Nice breathing. Okay, then we get ready for the left leg launches, so adjust a bit if you need to. For some people, the leg will move a few inches. For others, it'll go right between the hands. If you've done lots of yoga and all your joints are quite flexible, but have a few goes. You need to have good, strong arms as well to help support you. When ready, come as far through as you can. A little rocking to come back through. We'll push down to rise. You can come up with a straighter back or a rolled back. Lean to the right foot for left leg to come back. Let's reach through, take a nice stretch there. And then begin to release down. 
and come back to your natural standing position. Breathe fully, relax your body. Stand with that nice internal support. There's very little external effort required to have nice alignment. Find yourself lying down and resting comfortably. Perhaps there's a thin pillow behind your head and maybe a larger pillow underneath the back of your knees. Palms can rest facing up to the sides or you, you might like to rest your hands across your pelvis with your elbows out to the side. But begin to rest now. Feel the floor beneath your body. Feel your heels on the ground and your calf muscles, the backs of your legs on the pillow or on the ground, the buttocks, your lower back, your shoulder blades, the back of your head and your arms. Every part of your body that has contact to the ground, just be aware of that, aware of that surface area and allow your body to Relax into the floor. And now consider the space, the air above your body, your arms and your shoulders, your chest and your abdomen, and your legs. Feel how your clothing touches your body and how the air around your hands and your face is gently contacting your skin. You can feel the insides and outsides of your legs and insides and outside of your arms. You can feel the sides of your head and neck. Sense the air and the space around the soles of your feet. So we're becoming very body aware of our form with the contact to the ground and our clothing and air around the top sides of our body. And now begin to be aware of your breath. Just notice your inhale and your exhale. Notice which parts of your torso expand and relax. Feel your, sense your lower ribs and your lower abdomen gently expanding as you inhale and then relaxing and softening as you exhale. And begin to stretch your breath so the inhale just lasts a bit longer than you might normally do. And when you finish breathing in, suspend the breath for a moment, just even a couple of seconds before exhaling gently. And then repeat that. Inhale and hold. And when you're ready, gently but quite fully exhale. You can also allow a, a short pause at the end of the exhale phase. So it becomes a four-part breath. An inhale. Short hold. Nice, full, but gentle exhale. And then another short pause at the end of the exhale. And then just continue to breathe. Be aware of your breath. Let your ribs expand and relax. Feel your lungs. And as you keep aware of your breath, we're just gently going to work through the body, relaxing each body part. I'm going to start with your toes and your feet. Bring your awareness. Think about, feel and sense your feet. Sense the muscles and the bones 
and the quality, the sensation. What do your feet feel like right now? And we're going to allow the feet, your feet, to relax. You can even hear a, a repeated mantra, I allow my feet to relax. The bones, the muscles, the connective tissues, the skin, the whole of the feet. And then bring your awareness into your ankles. And you can hear the mantra, I allow my ankles to relax. You can just repeat that silently a few times and let your body hear that and feel that. Allow your ankles and your feet to relax. And you're breathing gently as you're bringing your awareness to the body parts. Focus now on your lower legs, your calf muscle, left and right, your shin, the shin bones, the lower leg bones. Allow that sense of support from the ground, almost like it's pushing up and cradling the lower legs and letting them rest down. And the sense of clothing and air around the lower legs just gently weighting down, keeping you present and aware, yet becoming more and more relaxed. Focus now on your knees. Sense your knees, the fronts, the backs, the inside, the outside, right in the middle. And breathe here as you focus on your knees. I allow my knees to relax now. And then bring your awareness to your upper legs, to your thigh muscles, the insides, the fronts, the outsides, the backs of your legs, the long thigh bone right in the middle. Feel the leg resting down into the ground. Feel that support. Allow the muscles to soften. Allow the hip joint right up to the pelvis, the top of the leg. Allow your hip joint to relax left and right side, both hip joints, and the buttocks and the hip flexors in front and the sides of your pelvis. So the whole, both legs now, thighs and pelvis at the top, knees, shins, ankles, feet and toes, all the way down, rested legs. Now let's think about the lower torso, around the belly, the waist, the lower back, the muscles and the tissues and the organs. We can breathe down here and let breath massage there and relax this area. And with your mind allowing this area to relax, you can even say to yourself silently, I allow my abdomen to relax, I allow my lower back to relax. And then that gentle, restful breath that's continuous. And bring your awareness up to the mid-torso, around the mid-organs, and your ribs, and the ribs touching the ground behind you, and out to the sides, and around the front, at the lower part of your chest bone. Take a breath right here. Breathe in and out from this section. And allowing that sense of weight down into the floor and the support of the floor coming up, cradling, supporting the body. And as you continue to breathe gently, allow your awareness to come into the upper torso, the chest bone, the ribs, the shoulder blades, the upper back right to the top of the upper back and right to the collarbones at the top of the chest. And take a breath or two here. Soften and relax your upper ribs and into your shoulders where the arms join the body. Think about your shoulders and upper arms 
and soften there. Feel weight there. Feel relaxation in your upper arms. And into your elbows. Bring your mind to your elbows. Sense your elbows and allow them to relax. And your forearms, the muscles and the bones, the connective tissues, all the cells, all relaxing together and breathing. And then focus on your wrists little bones in the wrist and into the palm, your hands, your thumbs and fingers. Focus on the area, relax the area and breathe. And allow your awareness to move back up through your arms, back through the shoulders and into your neck and feel your neck, the muscles all the way around and the bones through the center of your spine. Allow your upper spine to relax. You can repeat that mantra any time. I allow my neck to relax. And begin to focus on your head, the back of your head that's touching the ground or the pillow. And the top of your head and the sides of your head. And soften your brow, the forehead, your eyes can relax, your cheekbones, your jaw, nose and mouth and ears, and throat. And then have a gentle awareness of your whole body, a sense of relaxation through the legs through the torso, through your arms, neck and head, a balanced and integrated sense of restfulness. And just take a moment here to breathe and experience your body as one relaxed unit. Continue to be aware of your breath. And the sense of relaxation. And then begin to feel your whole body weighted on the ground. Once again, sensing the air around your skin and the clothing touching your skin. Sensitize your awareness to your whole body, your form. And begin to gently stretch into your toes and fingers and just a little easy waking up. Just moving your wrists. shoulders, sliding one leg away so the left heel might push further than the right and then right heel pushes further than the left. So some gentle movements when you're ready you can bend your knees so one foot's flat on the ground the other foot's flat on the ground. You can bring one knee right up to your body the other knee can follow and use your hands to gently hug the knees and squeeze in gently and release slightly away and just circle your knees around just to relax your lower back and allow one foot to rest down the other foot to rest down stretch your arms up towards the ceiling and just circle your wrists around give the arms a little bit of a shake out and then rest your arms back down straighten out your legs and give your legs a shake out 
pump the backs of your knees down, left to right, left to right, left to right. Just gently get a little more awakening in the legs and shake your feet side to side like windscreen wipers so your hips get to move. And then in your own time, when you're ready, bend your knees back up. You might like to roll to one side for a couple of breaths before coming back to seated and then taking your time to come back to stand. And then when you're back up and standing, check in with how your body feels, how your alignment feels. Probably feeling more relaxed, more calm, good alignment, good rested alignment, and ready to have a great day or a great night. Hi, this is Danny. Today I'd like to talk about something that affects us all. It's about fitness goals, about wanting to achieve something, about wanting to be fitter, faster, stronger. Perhaps you want to lose weight or be more flexible, or you want to feel, just, just feel stronger, feel fitter. These are all fine. Having goals, having aspirations, having something to work towards can be good motivators. However, there's one snag here. It's suggesting that your present state, your current fitness, isn't good enough. That you need to change, you need to be better. Problem with this is we're always chasing something. It's always that bit further away from us. It's a bit like your satellite navigation system in your car. You want to get somewhere. You program and you want to get to London. The sat-nav can only get you there if the satellites pick up where you are now. It needs a starting point, a point of reference, in order for you to be able to move forwards and get to your destination. This is the same with fitness. We need to come to terms with our present fitness, our present flexibility and strength and shape and tone, and find an acceptance, an okayness, and at the other extreme, a likeness for our present state. So well, let's try a little exercise here where you can close your eyes for this. It's a little two or three minute meditative practice. Find yourself sat down on a chair or stool and your feet are on the ground. And bring to mind one of your fitness goals. And be quite specific. You might want more flexible hamstrings. You might want stronger shoulders. You might want to lose weight from your belly. You might want less stiffness in your neck. You might want to beat your personal best at your half marathons. Bring to mind one of your goals. That goal is currently in the future. And unless we can start to bring that into our body, it's going to stay in the future. The results will be in the future, which means you're never going to get them. So let's come to now. Feel your body. Feel the pelvis on the chair, feet on the ground. Sense your form, sense the outline of your body. Sense your strength, weakness, flexibility, suppleness. Really sense your body in this moment. Feel your body. How you are now is exactly how you're meant to be right now. Let's trust that. Your present fitness, your present shape, your present strength and flexibility is appropriate. What I'm encouraging you to do is to be okay with this state. Even if you don't like it, you want it to change. To be able to change, you need to start here. Start to accept your body, your shape, your fitness, how it is now. This is the first step. Let's take a moment just to think about that. You can even hear yourself say, I'm okay with my body or I accept my body. I love my body to the other extreme. Find an acceptance, an okayness, and a trust that your body is how it is right now because that's how it's designed to be. If you can really come into your body now, this is the ground from which to move from. Bring your fitness aspiration to mind. Bring it into your body. Bring your future goal into the tissues of your body, into your shoulders for being stronger, or into your hamstrings for more suppleness, 
or into your body for losing weight. Sense that image now. Bring that into your body. Embody that. You've got a point of reference and you've got a goal. Merge them. Bring them together. Let them shake hands like you've just done with your body acceptance. Take a couple of breaths here. This is how the mind can really help you to achieve the fitness and the, the body flexibility, the strength that you want. This is the beginning. Okay, I'll take a nice deep breath in. And out. Okay, when you're ready, you can open your eyes there. Very simple exercise. Took us two or three minutes. I encourage you to try this for the next four days. Just spend a few minutes. Go, go somewhere quiet. Sit down. Feel grounded. Feel the chair. Feel your body. Think about your goal. Accept your body. Have an okayness with how it is now. That's the, that's the, that's the key part here. Accepting your body how it is now. Then bring your future goal into the tissues, into your body. Let them merge. Okay. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.